Hey everybody, Mike here. Thanks for watching the channel. I thought I'd show you guys a different telescope today. This is my Celestron 6SE Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And what you'll immediately notice is that this is a much smaller, more compact, um, you know, portable telescope than my Newtonian telescope, which I showed you in a previous video. This telescope is the one that sells out everywhere. It's a top seller on Amazon, B&H, Adorama, High Point Scientific. People love these telescopes, and I think that's for a couple of different reasons. You've got 1,500 millimeters of focal length, so that makes it a really good telescope for the planets, it makes it a really good telescope for the moon, it makes it a really formidable telescope for deep sky objects. You can actually get a focal reducer on this telescope that cuts the focal length down by about 0.6, and that also makes it a really good telescope to frame things like the entire moon, the entire sun provided you have a solar filter, the Pleiades, the Orion Nebula will fit beautifully in this telescope. And because it's got a standard back, you can connect cameras to this telescope really well to get solar system photography of the planets and the moon and the sun. Again, you have to be filtered. Um, one thing I love about it is you've got the controls all on this hand controller here. And you can't move this telescope without the hand controller. So if I go left, it will actually slew to the left and there it goes. And if I go up, it will slew up just like so. So I can't move this telescope like I do with my Newtonian telescope, which is just on an Altaz mount. This is all done by computer. So if I'm gonna align this, I basically just go look for Polaris and we'll just say that Polaris is over here. And once I have Polaris in my red dot finder, ooh, look at Polaris, then I can tell it, hey, okay, slew to Sirius. From there, it will go to Sirius. I'll center it in the finder. And then once it's centered in the finder, I'll center it in my eyepiece. And then I'll have a perfect two star alignment and I can see tens of thousands of different objects through the hand controller. This hand controller has ways to track solar system objects like the moon or the, or the uh, star or the um, planets. It also has all named stars, double stars, variables, globulars, clusters, galaxies, nebulas, all that fun stuff is in there. It'll also, of course, do the sky tour and help you identify what you're actually pointing it to. So this telescope is fully computerized scope, and as a result, you do need a power source. Right now, I've got it plugged into the wall. Um, you can also plug it into a battery. I'll show you kind of what that looks like. So on its tripod, which I'll put down here now, you see this big orange deal here? This is the battery for it, and that's gonna power it pretty much all night. It's just a standard lithium iron battery. And if you live in Florida or anywhere that it's humid, so that includes much of the East Coast and the Pacific Northwest, you're gonna need a roll-up dew shield for it and potentially dew heater. So this goes over the top of the telescope and it blocks the humidity or frost from coming in and fogging that front corrector plate, which you really don't want because it'll fog over in seconds. SCTs are famous for it. A couple of things you guys might notice is, I'm just gonna slew it this way. I've got these um, really nifty uh, bino viewer on the back of it. And what a bino viewer basically is, is it's uh, binoculars basically for your eyepieces. And that's really cool because if you're like me, and you have small children, they don't know how to squint. And what this will do is they'll be able to see the moon or a planet or other objects with both of their eyes open right through the scope. So I just have the standard 25 millimeter eyepieces in here. You can put in whatever you want and practice and it'll show in binocular vision what it is. I find it's not as good for deep sky objects and things like that because it dims the light by half in each one, but the moon, the gas giants, they have plenty of light uh, and they work beautifully with the bino viewers. Another thing I really like, six millimeter eyepiece. This is a gold line eyepiece. The gold line eyepiece is a 66 degree field of view, ultra wide eyepiece. And what you'll see is that it's got a much larger um, little optic than you typically get at six millimeters. This is a fantastic ocular for planetary viewing of Saturn and Jupiter and occasionally Mercury and Venus if you're lucky. This helps a lot. Another eyepiece I really like on this one is this uh, reticle eyepiece. So this is an illuminated reticle, that's what this thing hanging off of it is. And I turn this on, it gives me crosshairs. So when I do my alignment, my two star alignment, I am dead on on my uh, planets, on uh, my stars rather, and then it, it affects the whole night better when you get a really good alignment. So yeah, this is basically the Celestron 6SE telescope. You can see the whole package with the tripod and the telescope and the mount. You're probably talking 25, 26 pounds. I often will put the tripod in a large backpack kind of poking out of it and carry this mount 
fully assembled under my arm to the observing side. It travels really well in the trunk of a car, unlike the Newtonian, which takes up the back seat for the tube and the trunk for the base. This is a much more portable scope. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you do need a power source for it, so there is a little bit of setup involved, and you do have to get your two-star alignment. It's not a big deal. If you don't want to do a two-star alignment, if you're not interested in the names of the stars, you can do a sky align, which is three bright stars. You don't have to know what the stars are, but it is going to ask you to identify a third star because it needs to check your work. So you can point it at three stars and it will tell you, okay, that's Sirius, that's Capella, and that's Rigel. And you didn't know that, but it knew that, and then you're aligned. So if you don't wanna know what Polaris or Sirius or Vega is, you don't have to, this will find it. But like I said, really great telescope. There's a bigger brother to this telescope known as an 8SE. I'm not as big a fan, I've seen it at my Astro Club. It's very, very heavy on the same mount. If you want an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain, I recommend the Evolution instead. Um, and the same story with the Evolution. If you want the nine and a quarter inch, I recommend going with a, with a heavier mount because that's a tremendously large telescope. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my little review of the Celestron 6SE. This is probably my favorite telescope just because it's automated. When you're observing with family members who aren't into astronomy or little ones like three years old, five years old who aren't patient, this will track the moon or Saturn or Jupiter all night long. You don't have to keep nudging it like a dog. You don't have to use Altas charts to find things. There's no polar alignments that are necessary. It's just easy and that's why it's a number one seller. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing here, throw me a like and subscribe to the channel. I try to post videos on a weekly basis. It just depends. And um, yeah, have a great day. Thanks.